Chris, let's get right to you first. These earnings stories, yes, they're coming in weak. Yes, we knew that they would uh, when we we're talking about deposit flights in the wake of SVB. But at the end of the day, is this something that, as Jamie Dimon warned, could reverse by the end of the year? What we're seeing now, thanks for having me. What we're seeing this quarter is really a confirmation that, um, that earnings have peaked. We talked about this at the beginning of the year as a risk to the banks. Um, so overall, the level of profitability is coming down. You know, we cut estimates into the quarter by about 11%. Uh, numbers are coming down again. And really, they're not expensive stocks, but when you're cutting estimates, um, by definition, that, that is the risk of a value trap. So we have to be pretty careful in terms of um, finding exposure to the banks. All right, Herman, hop on in here before we get into the nitty gritty of some of the names that did report your take on the reversal by the end of the year. Yeah, that's right. It, things do seem to be stabilizing from a deposit standpoint. The first quarter's numbers did show about 2-3% uh, decline in deposits on average, but the hope is that things sort of stabilize from here. I would also say that the contagion fears that, that, that occurred after the failures of SVB and Signature are really put to bed now, and it's just more of an earning story that, that Chris mentioned earlier. All right, so here's the part we get to on the nitty gritty. Chris, I know you follow Comerica, the ticker CMA here. Shares down about 2.7%. They came out with their earnings. You've got a price target of about $57 a share. We're looking at about it trading at 45 right now. What's the bull case for Comerica? Sure. I mean, the, the bull case is this is a, um, a high quality uh, mid cap bank that's trading at discounted valuation. Stocks around 1.2, 1.3 times tangible book. Um, the earnings stream, the company spent a lot of time over the last five or six years trying to smooth out the earnings stream from rates. They're doing that. But really what they're what they're faced with right now is deposit flight. The, you know, this started um, in the back half of last year. They were pretty um, conservative in raising deposit rates. And so there's a bit of a catch up uh, with their funding costs. And so what you're seeing is margins are rolling over, estimates are coming down. And again, inexpensive stock, but really without a catalyst. Herman, your thoughts on Comerica, just how dire is their exposure to the SVB story, to the signature story? Yeah, they, they do have some exposure to technology and life sciences, but it's a much smaller portion of their overall deposit franchise. I would say that deposit decline in the first quarter of about 9% did surprise some folks. So uh, that's something that they'll need to address and rebuild their deposit base going forward. And Herman, let's stick with you here. I, I want to ask about some of the other banks reporting after the bell. Mm -hmm. Outside of the deposit flight or the total amount of deposits, which again could move by the end of the year, in terms of instilling confidence in some of these regional banks, how do they do that? Yeah, uh, you can just point to the stability of the overall balance sheet. Uh, the banks aren't really uh, touching the, the discount window or the bank term funding program. So those all point to the fact that the liquidity issues that, that were initially feared from the failures it, it has really receded. And the banks have the ability and flexibility to really manage their deposits uh, and their balance sheet despite some uh, continued attrition. All right, Chris, in our last minute here, I want to ask about the stocks themselves here. When we're looking at the actual price action, they are extremely weak, so cheap that the people who would want to buy at a discount, this kind of feels like the opportunity to do it when you're looking at their price to book ratios, for example. What will it take for these stocks to no longer, from a valuation perspective, look this inexpensive? Right. So, you know, in my 20 years at KBW, um, you've had two or three spots to, to buy the group. You've had the 08, 09 bottom in March. Um, you had the COVID bottom in, in 2020. Um, and what we're, we're debating now is whether this is that third moment. I, I think it's a little early. I think we're only five weeks removed from the SVB collapse. We still need resolution on First Republic, for example. Um, but really, the lack of a catalyst, these are late cycle stocks. So valuation can, can support the stocks. But in terms of relative outperformance, um, the banks are probably going to struggle a bit, um, perhaps not a ton of downside, but also not a ton of upside near term.